Well, we're not out of the woods. We are still getting some freezing rain, very light, but when that happens, I do not fly the drone. And you can see what happened back on Sunday. The drone was out in some very, very light freezing rain, but it was enough to cause problems. And it went down in a backyard not too far from here. Fortunately, I was able to track it and retrieve it. So no major problems there, but we're going to be a little bit more careful. There's our surface map, and I do want to point out that yesterday on the video, the date card that you see down at the bottom left, that was erroneous. Yesterday's video was actually for Tuesday the 16th. I guess during the midst of this outage and weather problem, things uh, did kind of fall by the wayside. Anyway, there goes our old polar high. It's starting to slip off to the east there, currently centered over the Great Lakes in Pennsylvania, and that's putting much of the southern U.S. under this northeasterly flow. The cold air has not gone very far south. If you take a look down in Mexico and out in the Gulf, some warm temperatures very close by. 77 there, west of Monterey. Not sure what city that is, but that's not too far from the border. And south of Louisiana, we've got 70s. Even 82 down there near the Yucatan. So that cold air has not really gone very far south. The back edge of the coldest air mass lying right there along the Sangre de Cristos and the Front Range. And that's leaving the four corners and this mild air mass of Pacific origin. Temperatures have moderated quite a bit across the southern and Midwest areas. Just teens and 20s, not the severe sub-zero readings we saw yesterday. And up in Canada, conditions have returned to typical February weather, with the coldest air found way up there in the high Arctic. Still an absolutely dire situation for many parts of Texas. This is the DFW area. We're looking at power outages, and a lot of these 50 pluses are the rotating outages. They have not had any ice since last Friday, so much of this is actually going to be rotating outages and not storm damage. Temperatures in that region have been below freezing since around Thursday last week. So we're going into day number six, and temperatures there are running about 26 at this hour. And it really is a dire situation because many people are not prepared for this kind of outage of electricity, water, having stores offline, that entire mess. So we're looking at uh, 460,000 outages, so that is good news since it's down from the 3 million that we saw yesterday. However, you can see that things are not looking good in the news, and for Dallas at least, I think this could turn into a humanitarian disaster. The problem is that so many burst pipes, they cannot get the water service restored. The systems can't be pressurized, and this is in multiple cities. Even we're out. So a lot of people are going to be without water for possibly days to weeks. And I think this is actually going to get a lot worse over the week ahead. It's going to drop to about 10 degrees Thursday night. And they can't even begin fixing this properly until the weekend. I'm hearing in uh, Plano there's thousands of buildings there with burst pipes. I've got parents without power. They're cooking on the fireplace. My cousin in San Antonio also does not have power or water, so they're on propane. And I don't know of anybody that has power and water at this time, including us. We have our water went out last night at 2 a.m. But don't worry, we've got plenty of water preparations here. But this has been a horrific level of cascading failures in many cities. And I don't think we've seen the end of this. I think things are going to get bad over the next week until the logistics and roads are cleared and we've had a period of warm weather. And only then can we start recovering from this disaster. 
Using the water vapor imagery, let's go back to Sunday the 14th and look at the past week. At that time, we had cold air covering much of Texas. Things were already pretty cold, and you can see the main wave coming from the Pacific and across West Texas, and that's what produced the majority of the snow that we saw that moved on off to the east late on Saturday into Monday, and now you're looking at Monday. This was the coldest day of probably the past 38 years. You can see that period of cold weather, the heat radiating out from into space from that snowpack. And then the second wave came in. This is last night going into today. And there's the first wave that produced snow over Oklahoma last night. And the second wave produced freezing rain and drizzle in southeast Texas. And only now are we starting to get some clearing. However, we're in this next area of clearing and with that, we're going to get another period of strong radiational cooling, which means cold nights tonight into Thursday night. And then finally on Friday, we should see a bit of air mass recovery. There's a look at the mesoanalysis at this hour. 27 at DFW, 24 at Midland, and 43 in San Antonio. Pretty good warm-up down there. 37 in Houston and 31 at Shreveport. Now, the freezing line has moved north to about Ozona, to around the Austin area, and then up through College Station, Buffalo, up to just south of Shreveport. And then it kind of pulls south a little bit into the Natchez area. Now, along that freezing line, we're starting to see freezing rain, freezing drizzle, and sleet. So we're talking about this area right here, some of it extending further south in Louisiana. So there are icing risks with this wave that's moving through. Much of that has pushed east of East Texas, now entering Louisiana. So Texas is getting out of the woods as far as precip. But out to the east, you can see snow coming down all the way up towards Blytheville in through Little Rock, where they're getting heavy snow. And it extends all the way up to Jackson, Tennessee and then down towards the I-20 corridor. And along and south of I-20, that's where the big risks are for freezing rain. And that's going to pull up into Mississippi later tonight. You can see Jackson, Mississippi, they're going for an extreme threat, half to one inch of ice up to one inch of sleet. And that's centered around the Vicksburg, Yazoo City and Winsboro, Louisiana area. And freezing rain problems also expected further north into northern Mississippi. So there's what we have at the hour in North Texas. We can poke around at some of the radars. The deformation zone back there, leaving behind some sleet and freezing rain in the Athens area. Further east in Shreveport, some heavier precipitation with these convective bands. And much of this is going to be freezing rain and sleet. And there's a look further south along the Texas-Louisiana border. We know that the freezing line is in this area right here. So this is all likely to be cold rain to the south. And then north of that, this can be freezing rain, gradually transitioning into sleet further north along and north of I-20. We'll go ahead and take a look at our forecast here. You can see all that snow and ice moving into northern Mississippi and southwestern Tennessee. We're looking at a chart for this evening. And another ridge moves south, pushes a little bit more of that cold air back into North Texas on the backside of that departing wave. And so we're going to have another 36 hours of cold weather. And then we'll start seeing a gradual warm up. The thermal boundaries, those are down to the south just south of this gradient that you see right here. And the tail end goes all the way up off the California coast. Over the next couple of days, you see that wave moving up into the northeast. Some snows and ice for Virginia, West Virginia, and the Delmarva area. Doesn't look too severe. And then we see this other wave down the boundary around western Georgia. So that'll come together and probably produce some weather in the Carolinas on Thursday. A little bit more snow 
with that push of cold air in Texas, you can see that coming together. However, that weekends and not without producing a little bit more snow in the San Antonio area, as if they haven't had enough. So Thursday night's going to definitely be a cold one. There comes that 528 line again. So we're looking at teens and 20s throughout Texas itself, which is just going to compound the problems we got going on. And then we see things becoming a little unsettled in the northwest. Where's that energy going to go? Well, it looks like it's heading for the central plains. So that comes out as a new weather system. By then, we've had significant warm air advection across Texas and probably temperatures coming up to the 50s and getting rid of much of that snow. That Gray Plains system will move into the Midwest, producing snow there at Chicago on Sunday. And a new cold front coming south, but that's going to be mostly a dry cold front. And up to the north, you can see this tremendous westerly get going. So highly zonal pattern, that's going to keep the Arctic air locked into place. So we're looking at kind of a mild close to February at this point. And we certainly need that. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for watching and supporting the weathercast. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. And as I've been saying, if you don't see us tomorrow, that means we've got some sort of problems with the power grid or something else going on. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. And if we don't have power, there's probably people that need it more than we do. So we'll just see. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.